When people think about building or using a sauna, they usually focus on the heater, the wood, or maybe the temperature control. But here's what most people miss, and it can make or break your sauna experience. Ventilation. Without proper airflow, your sauna can become stuffy, humid, and even unsafe. Today, I'm going to explain why sauna ventilation matters, how to get it right, and what to consider whether you're building one at home or maintaining a commercial unit. So why is ventilation such a big deal? Think about it. When you're inside a sauna, your body is working hard. You're sweating, you're breathing heavily, and you're losing water and electrolytes. The environment around you plays a massive role in how you feel. Without good ventilation, you run into a few big problems. Poor air quality, CO2 levels can rise fast, especially in tightly sealed rooms. That's not just uncomfortable, it's potentially dangerous. Humidity overload, too much trapped moisture leads to mold, mildew, and yes, wood damage. Discomfort, stagnant air makes it harder to breathe, harder to sweat efficiently, and just plain harder to relax. So even though it's not the flashiest feature, ventilation is foundational for both comfort and safety. Ventilation in a sauna isn't complicated, but it does have to be intentional. There are two key elements, the intake vent, this brings fresh air into the sauna. It's usually placed low on the wall, ideally under or near the heater. This helps draw in cooler air that then rises, mixing with the heat. The exhaust vent. This releases hot, moist air. It should be placed high up on the opposite wall. Hot air rises, and this vent helps it escape, keeping your air fresh and preventing moisture buildup. The result? A natural airflow cycle that continuously refreshes the space. Now, in some larger saunas or commercial setups, you might also see powered fans to actively manage airflow, especially in high humidity areas or outdoor units. You bet. Traditional saunas, which use heated stones and steam, need more aggressive ventilation. Steam adds moisture to the air, which needs to be controlled to prevent condensation and mold. Infrared saunas, on the other hand, operate at lower temperatures and with dry heat. They don't create steam, but they still need air exchange. Without it, you get that stuffy feeling that defeats the purpose of relaxation. In both cases, the key principle is balance. You want enough airflow to stay fresh, but not so much that you're dumping heat or disrupting the temperature curve. Here are a few of the most common sauna ventilation mistakes I see. Putting both vents on the same wall, that stops the airflow loop. You need intake low and exhaust high on opposite sides. Using vents that are too small, you need at least a four to six inch diameter for adequate airflow in most saunas. Forgetting to vent outdoor saunas, even barrel saunas need air circulation. If they're sealed too tight, they'll trap moisture and rot from the inside out. And here's one more, ignoring humidity. Especially in traditional saunas, balancing steam and air is critical. If you're pouring water on the rocks, your vent system needs to be able to handle that moisture load. At the end of the day, a sauna is supposed to be your sanctuary a place to relax, reset, and heal. But without proper ventilation, you're not getting the full benefit. You're missing out on clean air, optimal heat distribution, and a safer environment overall. So whether you're upgrading your home setup or choosing your next infrared or traditional sauna, make sure airflow is part of your checklist. Want a sauna that's already engineered with ventilation in mind? Check out the full collection at Infinite Sauna, where performance, comfort, and airflow are built into every design. Your breath matters just as much as the heat.